we're Chips and Salsa, and we are reevaluating our year so far. Hi, I'm Dee Dee. I'm Jimena. And we are Chips and Salsa, two homeschool moms bringing you fun, practical, and encouraging tips. Yes, we are all about community, and we want to stay in touch with you, so hit subscribe and hit that bell button so that you get notified every time we upload a video. And also consider joining our Facebook closed community group. We'd love to have you be a part of it. All right, well, this video is a collab, again, with our dear friends, Tanya from Project Happy Home and Lindsay from Mama Schmooze Reviews. We love these ladies. They've always been so supportive. Yes. And I personally watch their videos because I, I find them inspiring. Yes, thank you for your channels. Thank you. And um, you can follow them on social media too. So um, we will have the link of the collab videos below so you can check it out and we'll have a playlist too. So, all right. We're heading into 2020. The know. year of vision. Yes. <laughs> so how's it going for you so far? Um, you know what? I would not say this has been the most um, enjoyable uh, school year so far. My oldest is started high school and we put him into an online school with the local, like a charter near our home so that he can play basketball. And um, online just sounded so easy. Yeah, at your own pace. <laughs> no, it's at their pace and their pace is fast. <sighs> yeah. So fast. I know. And so that's been really tough. Um, his math lessons have not been, to me, very um, detailed, so I've had to do a lot of tutoring him, yeah. which I wasn't, um, not that I'm against it, obviously, but mm -hmm. I wasn't anticipating um, that he'd be so lost yeah. um, with the math because he'd been doing teaching textbooks, which is an online um, math curriculum. The pace is really hard, so if you miss a couple days, you're way behind. It's yeah. like two days worth of work each day for three classes, you know, instead of taking six classes. Yeah. So the end of his first uh, year worth of classes will be done this month, December 20th. Wow. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm right with you. I, I have felt the same way. And I think it's because it's so new to us, mm -hmm. you know, the high school. Um, I, I do have to say, though, that I, I kind of had a aha moment um, the other day where I was like, I don't think that I need to be pressured into something different just because she's in high school. Mm. I think that's a lot of my fear getting in in my way. Yeah. And, um, and so that's one thing that I've noticed is I have to continually surrender fear still daily after, I mean, this is like, I think my sixth or seventh year homeschooling and I still have to surrender. You have the standard and I think also it's because we go through a charter school and so you kind of have that like in your face all the time, you know what I mean? Right. The standards and the level and all that stuff, which is a good thing. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. We love our charter school. But, um, you know, I don't want it to, I don't want to sacrifice my why. Right. You know, why I'm homeschooling and, and my number one reason and my homeschooling values. And so I've realized the same thing. I enrolled her in two online classes and it was just taking over our entire homeschool. Like right. two classes. She's doing one college and one just through the regular school and they're just really charged with like just a lot of busy work. A lot yeah. of they're just really, it's, there's just, I just feel this burden, you know, of like, what are, why are you gonna do that? Like, you already read about it over here. You already watched a video about it over here. You already did a quiz. Why don't you do four more assignments on it? <laughs> right. And you're not going to be a biologist, you know, so, or in any sort of medical field. So it's, um, I understand, like, that's how high school can work. Right. Well, and, and right. how they're evaluating you, because in homeschool, we're right there. We know right. if they understand a topic or they don't yeah. understand it. So we don't need to give them quiz after quiz. And, and we know when we can move on and leave it alone. Right. Because it's not their thing. Right. <laughs> so... I think a lot of prayer in the next um, couple of weeks yeah. um, is needed for us, you know, in regard to high school. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I've been praying and I made my decision that I'm definitely going to pull her from the class after the semester. She's going to finish strong. Mm -hmm. We've already come this far. I'm not going to pull her out. Right. You got to get that before. credit. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to finish strong. Um, she's going to finish keyboarding and biology. And then we are thinking about, um, I've been looking at time for learning online something simpler or me just teaching her mm -hmm. and doing what we usually do, which is I'll go, I do have a high school biology textbook that she's not even really using for this class. I don't know why we even have it, but you know, I would use that as a spine right? and just have her read and summarize something for me. I'll pair it with videos just yeah. like we do homeschooling. So the thing with high school is you have to have that course needs to be approved ahead of time, right? Right. To get onto your transcript. So I think, once you get that, though, you should be good. Yeah, well, and it also, also, her son's doing A to G track. Right. And my daughter is not. We're doing just, you know, she's going to go right into junior college. So I don't need to be stressing out <laughs> the way we've been stressing out. Right. So I want to take advantage of the decision that we made because we made that decision because we want to enjoy the flexibility within homeschool still. I don't want to sour her idea of learning right four years before she has to graduate I still want her to enjoy it and not be st super stressed out I mean a little bit of stress is okay because she's got to understand what pressure is like and deadlines and stuff but like not when it's taking over and everybody's angry right so so that's that and then we have our junior hires <laughs> middle schoolers and we are doing Bookshark Level 6 with them, which is um, ancient and middle age history, which is combined with the literature yeah. and uh, language arts program. And I don't think we're loving that as much as we thought we would either. Yeah, although I gotta say it was redeemed for me. Um, we went to see N.T. Wright and he was talking yes. about the world of the New Testament. And he started mentioning Augustus Caesar and said, my kids were like, just write about Augustus Caesar this week. You yeah, know? And so yeah. All this stuff. And I think that it's starting to click. Even though the books haven't been as enjoyable as we are used to. I think as a whole, we're, I'm trying to change my perspective into that. And saying, okay, how does this help us understand the world of the Bible better? Like yeah. When Jesus was there. And so. That's awesome. Well, um, for me, um, I... I do think that there's a lot of value in going back through the ancient history, yeah. the ancient civilization. So I've enjoyed that part. I think the part that I haven't enjoyed is forcing everybody to read. Yeah. I, I want the reading to be fun. That's so that's been a challenge to me because I fell asleep reading some of the <laughs> read alouds and that was difficult. But. <laughs> Yeah, the Silver Branch got better toward the end, and I think the kids even, like, I got them all, you know, like, when we were listening to the thing, yeah. to the audiobook. Audiobooks help, guys. When yeah, we got the audiobook. Um, they were, I think it was redeemed by Sir Balin, mm -hmm. um, which was a funny book. It was an easy read, just one week, really light. And so, I, Bookshark, I think, does a good job at that, at, like, balancing. Yeah, I think they know. And so, I mean, we're just barely in, so I think... There's still hope. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think th the books, the last couple, have been better. And yeah. This week we're starting uh, two new books. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so I'm hoping that they'll be more interested yeah. in reading the books and that won't be such a struggle. The other thing was the science. So it's not just one area of science. We're doing chemistry and a little right. bit of biology and a little bit of physics and a little bit. And so I wasn't crazy about that. But I've actually really enjoyed this chemistry step section yeah. um, because it did get into some areas we haven't got to before, yeah. which was what I was hoping for because we've done chemistry in a cycle right. several times now. And uh, so I feel like some of the experiments were a little ex bounding on something we've already done. Yeah. Some of the uh, reading was a little bit deeper than what we've already done. And so that redeemed it for yeah. me. And I think chemistry's done. And yeah. then we're gonna be moving on to biology. And I think uh, for the biology, I'm gonna try to, to focus on having the kids memorize certain things. Oh, that's good. Um, so like that, some terms? Or? Yeah, so some terms maybe, um, I haven't really looked at it too much, but, um, 
some things that I think are important in biology for them to memorize, yeah. like the names of certain bones and muscles and, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Um, if you want to know what our original plan was, check out the video because we'll tell you what our original plan was for the year so that you know what we're doing differently. I also want to implement more scrapbooking. I think I want to make use better use of our scrapbook and I want them to scrapbook like history. Yeah. So I think I'm going to take some time for them to really do that. I'm going to have them choose one topic of whatever we read in the week mm -hmm. and really dive in. Write me a nice paragraph, you know. I think as far as like the way that I have things set up, I really like. Um, we've been listening to the story of the world mm -hmm. and then we're doing the timeline, mm -hmm. like kind of scrapbooking in the timeline yeah. book. And when I'm consistent with that, that's really that's nice. good. Yeah, so it's giving us a little bit of the scrapbooking kind of thing and the timeline thing, which we've done in the past yeah. and loved it. Yeah. And then when we got to Bookshark last year, okay. did not yeah. keep up with the timeline at all. So this year, using the timeline has been good. And then I'm using the lap book. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, that goes the history. with the history. That's awesome. As, um, but instead of putting the lap book together, which the kids weren't that interested in, we're putting it into our timeline. What about math? Math has been rough this year, huh? Has it? Well, a little for bit. one of my yeah. children, it's been rough. I think it was rough for my son for during the fractions yeah. section for my middle schooler. He's on to decimals now, and he seems to be fine. So We went to a parent um, workshop and talked about teaching math. Yeah. And she emphasized the importance of a hands-on activity, yeah. some kind of manipulative, even in the middle school and, and, and high school yeah. level. Yeah. Once they get to middle school, we just go straight to the abstract. Yeah. So coming back and trying to think of how to do manipulatives for the middle schoolers yeah. has been a new hurdle for me. Yeah, me too. But you know what we should do? We should plan a math uh, camp. Yeah, and that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking too. Something very foundational is fractions, yeah. decimals, percents. Getting that locked in will help them so much going forward when yeah. they get into algebra. Then we also have a cool writing workshop coming up. Yay! Um, that my um, friend who is, she's a known author now, <laughs> Harper Collins. Congratulations, yes. Laura. And she's gonna give us a free workshop for writing narratives. Which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, and that's her major, you know, she used to be a teacher and all that stuff, so it's just going to be great. It's going to be fun. Yeah, the kids are really looking forward to it. I mean, they uh, love writing, but not essays. <laughs> yeah. So, so they're, yeah, they love writing stories, so they're going to really enjoy that. Yeah. And then other than that, we have our, you know, typical, we'll probably have some other cram camps to lock in some weeks and, um... And other than that, I think we're pretty, we're just g going for it. I'm looking forward to Christmas break. Me too. I think um, it will be a really great time to reset. My son, my my high schooler's class will be over. Yeah. And um, he will actually be able to totally rest. Good. And um, you guys can think about it. Reconvene. Yeah. And, and everybody else can reset. We can get a little bit of... Um, order kind of back into things and yeah. I think this next semester is going to be amazing. I agree. Well, thank you for listening to us. Um, how is your year going? We want to hear about it. Um, I think it's so important to talk about these things, to brainstorm. You know, if there's one thing that's really like bothering you and you're like, man, I have this one issue in my homeschool. Let's talk about it. That's what community's for. Yes. We want to hear from you. Comment down below. Share this video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Yeah, we want to thank, again, uh, Tanya from Project Happy Home and Lindsay from Mama Schmooze Reviews. Thank you so much for being part of our collab. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.